Hey Clubhouse, Aaron here. We are now on Ko-Fi, a support platform where you can help us grow while gaining access to exciting new storytime adventures like never before. Head to ko-fi.com and search Hippo Campus Clubhouse in the Explore tab where you'll find multiple ways to offer support, from one-time donations to choosing one of four membership options, all of which allow you even more access to both me and the clubhouse with special ways of saying thank you, including a personal shout-out to you right here on the podcast. Whether you're a monthly member, a one-time contributor, following us on Instagram, or simply love tuning in and sharing our story time with friends, we are so thankful for your support. Now, on to the show. Hi, friends. Welcome back to the Hippo Campus Clubhouse, a fun and inclusive SEL-based storytelling podcast for kids. Aaron here, and today I've noticed that a lot of families are going back to school, including my own. My son is starting kindergarten, and we have friends entering preschool and first grade, and even a few are headed to second and third. Some of us are going back to school after spending the last few years online, and some of us are going to school for the very first time. The first day of school is filled with all kinds of feelings, and even if you've been there before, but especially if this is your first time. But have you ever wondered, what would it be like if it was your school's first day of school? Today, we'll find out what it would be like to be a brand new school who's being a school for the first time. Frederick Douglass Elementary School has just been built and has never ever had one student inside. So, of course, it's a little nervous for the first day of school. What will the children do once they come? Will they like the school? Will they be nice to him and treat him kindly? Let's find out by getting comfy cozy and ready to open our hearts and minds with School's First Day of School, written by Adam Rex. School's First Day of School That summer, they dug up the big field and poured the foundation and set brick on top of brick until they'd built a school. A sign above the door read in big, bold letters, Frederick Douglass Elementary. (sighs) That's a good name for me, thought the school. Most days, a man named Janitor came to mop the school and buff his floors and wash his windows. Oh, this is nice, the school said to the janitor. Just the two of us. Hmm, won't be just us for long, said the janitor. Soon the teachers will come and then you'll be filled with children. The school creaked. Uh, Children? Oh, yes, said the janitor. All kinds of children. They'll come to play games and to learn. Oh, said the school. Um, will will you be here? Hmm, you'll see me after the school day is over, said the janitor. Don't worry, you'll like the children. But the school thought the janitor was probably wrong about that. Then, one day, they came, the children did, and there were more of them than the school could have possibly imagined. They came on foot, on skateboards, by bus, by bicycle, 
and even cars. They got everywhere. They opened and closed all of his doors and lockers and drank water from his fountains and played on his giant jungle gym. There were slides and, and climbing rings and bridges and ladders and finally the school thought, oh, so that's what this is for. Some of the older kids gathered by school's back fence and showed each other their bored and angry faces. Ugh, this place stinks, said one, and the school gasped. I hate school, said another with puffy hair to the agreement of his friends. And poor school <sighs> sagged just a little. But he was confused because, well, the other kids seemed to have fun. One very small girl with freckles didn't want to come inside the school at all. In fact, her mother had to carry her inside. The whole time she was kicking and screaming and crying and pulling on the door to not go in. Poor school whispered to himself, Oh, I must be just awful. No one wants to be around me. I'm a terrible school, he thought. Later, when the puffy-haired kid came over to get a drink of water, he squirted him in the space with the water fountain. But, of course, he felt really bad about it afterwards. School watched the kindergarten kid sit on one of his rugs. The teacher said, as we go around the circle, please tell us your name. And there, school heard there was a boy named Aiden and a friend named Max and Bella and another Aiden and an Emma and a Caden and a Chloe. And the small girl with freckles was next, but she wouldn't speak. She only stared at her shoes until the teacher moved on sad, with tears just slowly but quietly going down her cheeks. I don't like school, she whispered into her lap. And that's when the school decided, well, maybe school doesn't like you either. Hmm. The children were in their chairs finally, but just as school was starting to relax, his fire alarm sounded, and all the children exited and walked to the other side of the field, leaving him and staring at him from outside. Oh, school was so embarrassed. He held his doors open for him wide when they returned. Sorry, he said as the first child entered. Sorry. Oh, sorry about that. Whoops. <laughs> sorry. Sorry, he told them all even the little girl with freckles. At 12 o'clock, the school was filled with food. And then at 12.30, the school was filled with garbage. And at one table, a boy told a funny joke. And another boy laughed so hard at that joke that milk came out of his nose. Ugh, ew, now I'm covered with nose milk, thought the school. But he had to admit it was a pretty funny joke. Even the girl with freckles liked it. After lunch, the kindergarten kids learned about shapes. A rectangle has four sides, said the teacher. One, two, three, four. And a square has four sides too. In fact, a square is actually a special kind of rectangle. The school was surprised. Wow, I did not know that, the school thought. Afterward, the children made pictures with glitter and paste. The girl with the freckles made a picture of the school. Oh, it looks just like me, thought the school, I except glittery. It's, it's like she's known me all my life. The teacher asked her, 
Do you think that I could have your picture? Don't tell anyone, but I do think it is the best. And she placed it up on the bulletin board. The school thought she was probably right about that, too. The freckled girl smiled when the teacher put her drawing onto the school wall with a pushpin. Ouch, said the school, but he didn't mind. Not really. At three o'clock, the parents came to pick up the children. At 3.30, Janitor came to pick up the school. I was full of kids today, the school told him. A and I heard a joke, and I, I accidentally had a fire drill, but everyone was so nice about it. And I listened to a classroom, and I learned about shapes. I have so many shapes. You had a big day, said the janitor. Do you think, um, the school said, uh, do you think you could invite everyone to come back tomorrow? Um, especially the little freckled girl? The janitor nodded. I'll see what I can do, he said. Later, janitor sat on top of the school and they watched the sun go down together. The school then said, In the beginning, I didn't know what I was. I, I actually thought I was your house. <laughs> Nope, said the janitor. Um, I suppose some other place gets to be your house, the school added, and the janitor nodded. That's true, but you get to be a school, and that's lucky. And the school thought that the janitor was pretty right about that. The end. So it seems, friends, after a long summer of being new and having only one friend, the janitor, to walk his halls, school needed just as much time to adjust to school life as his students. Like the kids who attended the school, he was nervous about what to expect, worried he might make a mistake or two, and scared that no one would like him. But once the day was done, school realized that everyone was facing the same fears and like him they too just wanted to be liked treated kindly and above all have fun when the little girl with freckles said she didn't like school poor school felt so sad but then he realized that she was just nervous just like he was about meeting for the first time and what a kind friend he had in the janitor, who was just as loving and supportive on school's first day as he had been all summer long. What about you, friends? How is your back-to-school adventure going? Have you gotten more comfortable with the routine? What about where to put your things and how to find the bathroom? Have you found someone who makes you smile each day? And is there someone who's helped you with something? Or maybe you've helped someone else this week? Even if it still feels like you need more time to adjust, know that each day will get better. Transitions, which is when you switch from something that you know very well into something that's brand new, they do take time but it's just like the ones that you've already walked through. Soon, you'll be up and running in no time at all. Friends, I hope you enjoyed today's story. And if you did, have a grown-up click the link in the show notes now to purchase. For more stories like this one, visit our website at hippocampusclubhouse.com. Subscribe to Never Miss a Storytime with us and follow us on Instagram at Hippo Campus Clubhouse to join the fun. Before we go, I want to say a big thank you to our Ko-Fi and Patreon supporters. Your contributions allow our free story time to reach children just like you all around the world. 
Learn how you can gain more Clubhouse perks by visiting our website by clicking the support link in the show notes now. Friends, thank you for joining me today. And until next time, remember to keep telling your story with an open heart while listening to others with an open mind.